All right, let's give it a shot. Hey everybody, I am Clint from Princess Craft RV, and yes, I know, I am not PJ. She is quite busy and we're trying to back her up and give this a shot. So today, I will be going through the 2024 Luna Rover from Intec RV. Now this trailer is, it's, it's kind of a teardrop model, a little bit off-roady. It kind of follows those form lines. It's not for everyone. We know the small trailers, the off-road trailers um, that, that can get off the beaten path a little bit. They aren't for all RVers, but it might be for you. So how about you stick around and take a look at it with us? All right, let's go ahead and get started with just a few of the specs on this thing while I'm outside, then we'll go inside. This is, of course, the more off-road worthy model of the Luna Rover. And so it's a little bit higher up. It is about 15 and a half inches of ground clearance, whereas the base model is about four inches lower. That helps out if you're trying to sneak this into a garage. A standard garage is about seven foot tall at the opening. Of course, the inside is a little taller, but seven foot tall opening. The deal with this is it has a roof rack and that extra ground clearance, and the roof rack and the ground clearance adds up to just over seven foot. It's more like seven foot, two and a half inches. Whereas the base model of the Intec Luna will get you in, it squeaks in at six foot, 11 and a half inches. Now the overall length of this trailer, so if you need to know how much space you need inside your garage, is 15 foot long, six inches. So it's 15 and a half foot long. Keep that in mind. If you want to sneak this into your garage, you're gonna need to, to go with the base model. So the overall weight on this trailer is about 1,850 pounds dry weight. So before you put any water or anything else in it, the tongue weight is about 270 pounds. Um, and if you're looking at what you might find this going for, the MSRP as this exact trailer is outfitted today is about $28 thousand dollars but you can find them for sale all across the country for probably that twenty three thousand dollar range it would be more or less depending on where you're located in the country due to things like transport transport fees and things like that now before we go much further do remember that uh, features options things like that can change over the course of a uh, manufacturer year so what you're looking at on your dealership's lot anywhere in the country or canada may be slightly different so you're gonna to wanna to check out what the features and the options are on that unit and compare that to whatever else you're finding online or if you happen to be able to get to multiple dealerships. So just keep that in mind, features, options, they change. Make sure you know down what you're looking at and get the right answers from whoever you're talking to. Let's take a look inside this trailer. Okay, I came around the other side because I, we don't need me to be backlit. Now, you'll notice I am quite a bit taller than PJ. She's five foot, and I'm usually on the other side of the camera, and I am six foot four. So you'll see that that makes a bit of a perspective difference. But let's talk about the numbers in here. This is five foot nine inches across in width, it's six foot 11 in floor length, and then it is four foot six inches tall. I'm standing outside. I'll show you what it looks like with a six foot four uh, human on the inside here shortly. Now let's, let's hop in and I'll kind of take you around the space. Okay, now I'm inside the trailer. Again, I am a six foot four individual, uh, probably accustomed to slouching, but let me sit on up here and you'll see the amount of headspace I have. Now from fingertip to fingertip, I have a six foot six wingspan. So this is kind of what I'm looking at here. You may not even be able to see, but I have some space in here. Um, I do like the flooring in these. It is from the yacht industry and it's uh, it's really good for them. So it works really well in this. This is a, an infinity woven floor, easy to maintain and easy to clean. Let's look at what I can see right here and then we'll move around the cabin a little bit. You have doors on both sides, which is kind of a typical feature of uh, teardrop trailers because it keeps you from having to crawl over someone all the time to get out. It's also good for you know airflow, good for safety. I like the teardrop format. One of the reasons is it's easy to get in and out. All right, you have your standard handle lock and whatever. They have really good doors, good seals on these things. Your main lights, now you have main light switch on both sides, so it doesn't matter if you're on the left or right side, driver's side or passenger side of this trailer. You have the main light switch, you have a porch light switch on both sides. You have a few more switches 
on the, the passenger side and those are your cabinet accent lights and your exterior front accent light. We'll not be able to show you that one because it's bright sunlight out today, but it's a really neat light on the front of the trailer. Now let's take a look. The cabinetry around here is really top notch. They do all the cabinetry in house. So it's, it's not ordered and brought in and then kind of shimmied in to make it fit. They really do a good job of making sure their cabinetry is specific to the models that they design and engineer. Um, let's look at the folding futon mattresses. This is an option in these trailers. They do make a true 60 by 80 bed, which is a true queen, residential queen bed. I do like them. They're easy to clean, um, a good material, but the fact that they fold up the way that they do to make seating that I can t sit here, have someone in a conversation, maybe play games, maybe talk, whatever, on the other side. And here again, at six foot four, this is not so bad. Um, com coming from a background of being as big as I am and using two and three person tents, this is pretty nice experience. Now on the roof, it's pretty clean. You have a few puck lights controlled by that switch. You also have the max air fan, which is a great way to move air in and out of these trailers. So obviously having big windows, big doors, and a nice fan in the roof allows for great airflow to bring air in and bring air out should you need to. You may be in a place where you do not need an air conditioner. There is an air conditioner, but if you're in a great place, Use the outdoors, use what's provided. Let's look at the things that are behind these futons right now. Give me a moment. All right, now we, we have moved the futon mattresses over and of course, six foot four, so I'm up on a knee, I'm a little bit taller here, still very manageable. Think of a situation where you might need to get dressed because the weather outside isn't so good or you don't have facilities. This still does work even if you're a bit taller. Now look at this wall and you're gonna find, you know, the basics. Most trailers these days, whether you uh, need music or not, you're going to have a good option here. It's the Jensen unit, and it does have this strange looking slot here. If you're still packing CDs and whatnot, you're good to go. You can still bring them. Um, it does allow for music inside and outside. We'll show you the outside kitchen later. Now, this is an 8000 BTU air conditioner, and it works really good for this size space, really good. And depending on what size small generator you bring, you can still be off grid, take a generator and run this. You're not gonna run it off of the batteries, but off of a generator, a small inverter generator, it works beautifully. Okay, let's take a look further down. This is your converter. It converts your shore power, the cord, into battery power. So it charges your battery and also it allows you to run any of the 12 volt appliances. You're also gonna find breakers for anything, any of your 110 powered units, maybe your air conditioner. Um, it also has fuses. Okay, so as we go on, it's, you can't miss the fact that there's a, for this size trailer, a rather large television. Um, there is also this fireplace. Now it runs off of 110, not off of battery power. It has several different color settings and modes and whatnot. But one of the nice things about it is it is also an electric heater. So if you do need an extra bit of heat, you can run that if you're running off of 110. Now that can be a generator or that can be shore power. Let's look at storage on this wall. Obviously we have our cubbies behind me with the nice bands there. You have hooks for hanging items if you need them. And you have these cabinets here. Now, notice they don't hold open, but they do have beautiful soft clothes. Let's try that. Soft clothes. So not a, they don't hold themselves open, but they do have soft clothes. I think, you know, fine. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate around and we're going to work our way around the interior space and carry on. Okay. So we've transitioned just a few inches over really. And let's go ahead and talk about these shades on these windows. These windows are super easy. They do have screens on them and the shades are simple pull down kind of accordion style. They do a good job of blacking out the light. Now I just changed that for the camera operator. Sorry about that. So I'm going to bring that back up, but you can see if you have these uh, closed, they'll do a good job for you. Maybe it's a full moon outside and clear skies and you just need it dark to sleep. 
you have some safety uh, equipment here, obviously the fire extinguisher, your smoke detector. I did fail to mention your other detector that is right down here on the wall. And that's for your propane gas and whatnot. Um, keep it low because it's heavier than air. Um, light switches that we talked about before. A remote for your max air fan. So if you're laying down and you did, I don't know, and you don't want to reach up there or you want more control, you want to see the actual readouts, there you go. It's time to show you the front of this kind of expanded teardrop trailer. So let's change position and see what we have up front. Okay, we're at the front of this Luna. Now again, this is a curved roof, so you're gonna see that I do lose some headspace the closer to the front I get. I'm fine with it, I'm used to, I'm up on my knee. Most of the time, most of us aren't gonna be uh, holding the, I don't know what they call it, the Captain Morgan pose. So let's go through what I have up front here. Now I do have some storage on both sides, and we'll get some B-roll of that if we're not able to get in this shot. There's storage on both sides. Let's go through some of the items that you may find in this trailer. Remotes for your television, your stereo, and whatnot. So I'm gonna put that in there. Your typical owner booklet with appliance paperwork and trailer paperwork and things like that. Your 30 amp shore cord. Should come with your trailer. Make sure that you leave with that. This is your manual crank for your stabilizing jacks. Now they aren't um, leveling jacks, they're stabilizing jacks. I really like to get one of these fittings for my electric drill. Speeds that process up. Now, this is an exterior cover for that beautiful front window. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Your trailer should come with this, and it's a great way to protect that front window when you're driving in transit, or when you're camping and you want the, the blackest of blackouts in that window, or if you're in storage. Great way to protect it. Take a look for that, put that in there. And these are guy lines and tent stakes for that awning that you saw out front. We'll uh, put those in the storage as well. You can always organize your storage any way you please. You do have lights up front here, LED lights, a blue, hold it down, you get a white, you have more storage hangers, speakers. Now, cup holders up here, 110 outlets here, 12 volt outlet there. So they really kind of put items where you can reach it. Now, here's the surprise of this small trailer. If you really need your trailer, no matter what format of trailering you have, if you really need a trailer that allows you to not have to get out of the trailer in the middle of the night to go outside to go to the restroom, this trailer has you covered because we have a cassette toilet right there not for everybody but at a really excellent option for those who are about that life perfect it works well it's a thetford product they are really proven in the cassette toilet space so i wouldn't worry about this option one bit and it's super accessible perfect if you just don't want to leave your trailer in the middle of the night now I've hesitated to do this because it messes with the settings on the camera, but I'm gonna show you this front window briefly and see if I don't get in trouble. So this blackout shade just rolls up projector style. Now that might have really blown out the image on the camera. So I'll bring it back down. We'll see it on the outside, but if it's not direct sunlight, what a beautiful view you get with this trailer. Okay, I think I have covered most of the items inside this Luna Rover from Intec RV. So follow me outside and we'll get a look at the things there. We are back outside the Intec RV Luna Rover. And you're gonna, the first thing is always this front windshield. It is an automotive glass windshield. So it can, it can really take the same thing that your tow vehicle's windshield can take. Obviously that means that there are chances of chips if you don't have that protective cover on but it can be repaired the same way. You know, with, with uh, whoever comes out and repairs chips on your automotive glass or what have you. It can also be replaced the same way if you need it to happen. So let's look at this. The Luna package, the base package, doesn't have all the things that you've seen. Obviously there's been some options, like that fireplace is an option, the, the toilet is an option, but the Rover package itself comes with different graphics. It comes with different wheels and tires a little bit better ride or 
more clearance, not only say better, but more clearance if you need that. It also comes with this adjustable roof rack, which can hold, uh, my understanding is 200 pounds per bar in dynamic weight. So that means you can load it up with the rooftop tent or some other gear up to uh, that 200 pounds per bar and drive safely. Now, obviously, if it's me in a rooftop tent, I'm I'm over that limit per bar anyway. So a rooftop tent's weight plus me, maybe uh, maybe I have kids camping with me or wife or whatever. The dynamic weight is different than static weight. Once you are set in your location and you are stabilizing jacks are down, then really I have been in these situations and I have no worries about that static weight setup, having me, another adult, and a rooftop tent set up on top of one of these. I don't worry about it at all. That dynamic weight is where you're looking for the safety. Okay, let's take a look at this. The Rover package has the different rover graphics they are a little bit more rugged more ground clearance it has the <clears throat> the rack on top this awning is an option this is an ovs overland vehicle systems awning it comes straight out it's a good awning really it is um, the rover package also has these steps if you need to get up to your gear not a problem easy to do while I'm up here, I noticed that this is a one-piece fiberglass roof from the nose cone, which is this piece right up here. It starts here, this roof section, one piece, fiberglass all the way to the kitchen. That's good. Fewer seams is always good. You still do need to check seals around the edges. You want to check seals around the fan. But other than that, you're in really good shape. It's pretty easy to maintain. These are 15-inch wheels with upgraded off-road tires. You do have a spare tire, it is underneath. Roaming around, the Rover package also adds this tube bumper that I'm touching right here. Um, you can tie things to it if you need to, I suppose. I just like the looks of it, and it, I guess it gives you that little margin of error if there's something, a bump or something. Are you ready to see the kitchen? I'll open this up for you. Okay, got it on, all unlocked for you. Let's open this up. And there it is, in all of its glory, this outdoor kitchen. Again, this is not, this doesn't veer deeply into the RVing kind of lifestyle. It's a little bit closer to camping, which is fun if that is the sort of thing that you're into where you want to be outside more. Um, works for me, works for a lot of people. Let's, let's go through the components here. This is a 40 quart, 12 volt refrigerator. So it's compressor driven and it just lashes in here, plugs into the back there. They work really well. I really like using 12 volt compressor refrigerators in this format because this is the sort of thing I take in my truck whenever I'm headed out with my family. Anyways, big brushed farmhouse sink. It is true metal and a really nice high faucet so you can get your dishes in there to fill, to wash, what have you. Um, right across the top here, um, you have some good cabinetry space for your kitchen essentials, your storage. Again, they make all this cabinetry in-house at Intech. Makes for beautiful fitment and uh, just a good look. Hangers for whatever things you need. Another storage space here, easy access. Your accent light, this is gonna be real hard to see in this direct sunlight. It is a perfectly blue sky out here, so it's gonna be hard to see. You have an accent light right up here. And then your main light, which shines here. These work really well, I don't know, at night. <laughs> Not so great right now. Uh, really nice looking backsplash. It's just a good feel, good materials. Um, and this is a two burner stove. I have this same stove and a lot of the same equipment, sink and everything, in my Intech Fire Discover. I hope I didn't mess up the microphone by touching it there. But uh, it works really good for me and my family. Outdoor speakers, let's look under here. A little bit of storage. Now this is where you have, you're gonna have your storage for your battery and some other storage access to some plumbing. So be careful what all you put in there, but it is good to go as long as you're a little bit mindful. Some more storage here, not the deepest storage. So there's equipment. This is not actually a door here. There's 
equipment behind here. I'm trying to recall what it might be. Oh, I know exactly what that is. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so a little bit of storage there. Now I wanna take a, a moment and go ahead and have you step back for me just a little bit. Again, I'm six foot four, barefoot. I'm wearing shoes today, so let's call it six five. I have a six foot six inch wingspan. Here's my head clearance under here. That doesn't work with all teardrop trailers, but I can easily walk in and out without making impact and causing memory loss issues. So I do like this space. They do have really good sealing mechanisms all the way around. Your stuff stays secure, seal, sealed, dried. It's a really nice outdoor cooking space. Let's round the corner, see what we can find there. Okay, well, we are on the other side and it, we do have stabilizing jacks on the rear corners. Um, whenever you're doing this, remember stabilizing jacks are not meant to really lift and level your trailer. You do that with a tongue jack and with whatever you have underneath your wheels. This just keeps it from rocking too much whenever you're moving around inside the cabin. Now, on the other side, I mentioned, hey, what's behind there? Oh, it's this little cabinet here. This is your five pound propane tank. So these things will last a long time for your stove because that's the only thing on this camper that is running off of propane is that two burner stove. This little five pound tank will last you quite a while, even if you cook a lot. All right, it is not locked because you're not supposed to have a locked propane storage bin, but it is vented. We have a few things here. Um, we have, venting for the back of the air conditioner. Whenever you're running that air conditioner, it gets a little hot on the back side of the unit, so we have venting there. We have an inlet for satellite or for cable. If you're at RV park or you bring a satellite dish, you can plug it right in there, feed that into your television. This is an exterior solar port. If you're going to bring one of the folding portable solar panels, so you can park this in the shade and put your solar panel in the sun and move it with the sun as the day moves along, that's a great way to go. Plug it in right there. This is your inlet for your shore power cord, 30 amps, not 50, not less, it's, it's a 30 amp cord. Okay, you'll see that we have some equipment down here to turn on the lights. This is just in-house equipment. This is one of those solar generators or battery banks uh, and one of our in-house cords. The trailer cord is the one I showed you earlier. Okay, again, nice wheels, nice fenders moving along radio antenna you can see the rack really well those rover steps the front of the intech luna check that out it's kind of a statement piece isn't it it has a very iconic front it has the tilt forward design that they are known for that kind of eyebrow let's take a little closer look it does have buttons on the front for that cover that i showed you when we we're on the inside to cover your windshield while you're traveling or in storage this is that light the accent light on the front kind of hard to show you in, in direct sunlight but it is right there you turn it on on the switch on the side over there that gives you access if you need to see what you're doing in the early morning or the late evening here on the tongue this is the panel where you access the cassette toilet. So let's take a look at the cassette toilet. This is a very, very common system in other parts of the world. I know that it's, it's kind of, it's in its catching on phase here in the States, but it's a very useful system. In Europe, most of their trailers and RVs will actually have a system similar to this. It's a cassette toilet system. And let's see if I can show you how it works. I'm going to lift a little handle here and pull this out. Now there's a valve on top that whenever this is pushed into place, it automatically slides open and allows for the toilet to be used. Whenever it is pulled out, it automatically closes shut. Then you just have to take this to a dump station, maybe a uh, vault toilet in the campground, depending on where you are. And you can do that using these wheels and this handle that rolls out. So you can kind of take it along like it's luggage. Then you have a spout and a pressure release valve and you just dump it into that vault toilet or into the um, dump station. You put the cap back on rotate this around and remember this valve stayed closed the whole time while you're handling it 
then you simply put it back into place, slide it back in, and when it clicks back into place, that cover, that valve opens back up and it's ready for use on the inside. It's a very easy to use system and it's pretty proven. It's just maybe not as common, maybe not as accepted in the US, it's getting there. It's a, it works and anything that works, we'll adopt. Okay, let's take a look down here at the tongue. Two inch ball and you can see the aluminum a-frame here. Now, that's that's not the only place aluminum is. The thing about Intec trailers and how they're built is they they do all this metal work, all the aluminum work in-house. It comes in as raw aluminum bars and they engineer this thing like crazy. So it's an aluminum frame. Then the next step is they do an aluminum cage all the way around before anything else is done. No interiors built, no exterior walls are hung, no roof is put on. It is one complete welded aluminum system on an axle before they go into any of that. Very lightweight and very, very strong. So keep that in mind. It's, it's kind of a, um, a feature of Intec RV trailers. Okay, a rotating wheel here. I like these. Um, they, they, I mean, they, they just work, but they also mean I don't always have to crank all the way up to get it out of the way and then crank it all the way down to get it out of the way. I do like those. Okay, safety chains, your seven pin plug. Let's come around the front and finish this up. Before I wrap this thing up, there's this little magnetic hold open for the door and it's just a post and holds this door open quite easily. No clipping, no nothing. It's pretty good, pretty substantial. So in moderate breezes, I don't worry about it at all. So good if you want that cross breeze through both sides. I don't know what else to bring up. So if you have questions, you need to check with your dealership or check with us here at Princess Craft. Um, this is a really capable, nimble little unit. It can go almost anywhere. It's pretty lightweight for towing, it fits in tight spaces. If you get the base model, then it might even fit in your garage, which means you don't have to pay storage fees and you don't have to worry about things like an HOA bothering you because it's in your driveway. Do recall that this Rover package adds height and the rack adds height. So you probably won't get it into your standard American garage if you have the Rover package. But I digress. This is a really fun trailer to camp in. It works really well for singles, for couples. If you want to be a little bit more outside, if you like that style of camping, this is a fantastic option from a good company with a great build. Um, not much more to say about that. So until next time, and until we get PJ back to do these videos again, I'm Clint from Princess Craft RV. Thank you so much for joining us for this walkthrough tour of the Intec Luna Rover.